G'day everyone and welcome back to another episode of Automotive Carnage. In today's episode we get back to work on our 1979 Toyota Crusader and we swap out the steering boxes for a rack and pinion arrangement. So it's been a long time coming, but finally we get to do some work on the 1979 Toyota Crusader that I pulled out of the bush. This car was left sitting out abandoned in the weather in the bush around where I live for 20 odd years as far as I can work out. It's since turned out I have found one of the original owners for this vehicle and I'm teeing up a meeting with him to have a chat to him about why he got the car, where he left it and a little bit of a history behind it. But he works on the mine site so trying to catch up with him is a little bit difficult, but stay tuned for that one. Anyway, what I've planned to do with this is make a bush car from the bush. So, I found this in the bush and every part that I've subsequently put in it or going to put into it, I have to source from the bush around me. There's lots of cars abandoned around here, as you've probably seen in some of my bush wreck hunting videos. And still letting those parts go to waste, I'm going to try to put them together and make a fully functioning car out of them. Now, there's only two parts that I'll be buying brand new, and that is the brakes and the fuel lines. Those are two areas I don't want, I want the car to stop. And I don't want to catch on fire, so I'm going to buy those brand new. But everything else so far and in the future will be sourced from the bush. So far, we've pulled the 4M engine out of here, the 2.8 litre straight six, and we've replaced it with a 5.4 litre modular V8 or a Barra 220, whatever you want to call it, uh, of the free valve configuration. Yes, it's not a very desirable V8, but it's the one I found, and I only paid $500 for the entire car, so I have everything that I need. I have the engine the transmission, the, all the electronics, the PCM, everything to transplant everything I need into here to get the car to actually run. I've recently found a LSD diff of a two, early 2000s Hilux, so that's going to be able to handle the power of the 220 Barra. As standard, this Crusader only has what's called an E-Series diff, which is lucky, I think it's a 7 inch ring gear, which is not very big, whereas the diff that I have found out the Toyota Hilux is a about an eight and three quarter inch, I think it is. So it's quite a lot beefier, and it's a proper LSD. But unfortunately, that's a least sprung axle, and this is a coil sprung cap. So we're gonna to to take all the mounting points off the diff that we've got, and have to weld on all the correct points so that we have the same pickups. That's gonna be a lot of fun. That's a future episode as well. Now, today's mission. The engine fits in here nicely on our little homemade engine mounts, but we have trouble with the heads fouling on the steering box and if the heads foul on the steering box the car well the engine doesn't really fit properly and I have no room to make headers to go down past the steering box so I have found the VH Commodore out in the bush that's going to be donating its manual steering rack and I got to fit it into there somehow I've got 80 millimeters of room between the subframe and the transmission hopefully it all fits but anyway, let's get down to work. This morning we're going to take out all the old steering system and then we'll go out bush later on and we'll go find this VH Commodore with its manual rack and then we'll see it go, go about pulling it in here. Let's get into it. One old 1970s technology is now out of the car. Didn't quite come out as easy as I anticipated. I wanted to pull this board joint off here and leave this attached, but it's all going to come off anyway, so took everything out. And now we are ready to go out bush, find our VH, and find a suitable replacement. Okay, so we've made it out bush here, and my VH Commodore is actually a VC Commodore, sorry. So I know many people are going to get annoyed at me for getting it wrong. But anyway, it's a VC Commodore. Um, it has the four cylinder Starfire engine still in there, we see that soon. But most importantly, it has a manual steering rack. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the entire steering column, in case we can use parts of that in our Toyota, 
and then we'll roll the car over and undo the rack from underneath. It's gonna be a lot easier. And yes, that's a first generation Honda Civic without a roof. Very nice car. So just a little bit of a closer look in case you're interested. That's the last of the Starfire engine and what's left of it. Someone's nicked off with the head. I'll see near to fix their car somehow. But down in there, you can see our rack, no power steering, which is exactly what we want. It's going to make the rack narrower and much easier to fit. I don't have to worry about power steering reservoirs and lines and all that kind of stuff. So we've got to undo a little bolt down in here, take out the whole shaft. Um, I'll do that off camera. And um, next thing you'll see is this car getting flipped onto its roof. This is fun. I always enjoy doing that. Okay, so here's our new steering rack. Um, unfortunately, I cracked the casing a bit while hammering it, but a little bit of glue and she'll be right. You don't need to know about that. Um, it's only a bush car. It does still operate, it does move, although very hard. Oh, it hasn't moved for a long time. And we've also grabbed the actual steering column in case we need to take up to a certain point. I've got a bit of a plan to make the Toyota column fit the Holden rack, um, but once we get in the car, we'll be able to sort that out. Uh, the other thing too, I've got to bring a grinder, so I'm going to have to come back here, cut the mounts off so that we can use those to hold our, um, hold our rack into place properly. Cool, let's head back to the shed. Alright, so we are back in the shed, and as you can see, I have already mocked up our new rack. I was about to say past steering rack, but it's not, it's just a steering rack. It fits in here quite nicely. Um, we're going to have to make up some custom brackets. There's no point going back and getting the Commodore ones because they're just on the wrong angle and everything. So if we're going to modify them, we might as well just make custom made ones that are going to work properly. Um, you can see where I've cracked the casing, but a little bit of need it and um, some glue and RTV, we should be right there. It's not holding high pressure power steering fluid, so it, it's a bush car, guys. Get over it. It'll be right, <laughs> I hope. Um, and then our rod going up to our column, it's a bit janky, but I've got a plan that I will explain soon for that. But, one of our issues we have, as you can see, hell, can you see? There's some major toe issues there. So, the steering rack's too long, uh, the tie rods just stick out too far. But, there's still plenty of thread here, so hopefully, we can chop off some of the edge because these are already bottomed out. So chop off some of the inner tie rod and then that will be able to thread on further up the inner tie rod, pulling these knuckles back into a straight line. That's the theory. That's going to be an easy fix. No problems there. Um, mounting is going to be fine. So yeah, this is going to be our hardest part. So what I'm going to do now is pull out the steering column for the Toyota and we're going to hopefully chop this off this is off the Commodore so chop that there this is just a hollow pipe and hopefully we can sleeve this over the Toyota column and then we can use th this joint here uh, to mate the Toyota with the Holden steering rack so that's the theory but it all depends if this raw steering column in here is the right diameter so we have to pull it out to find out if I'm sounding all a bit unsure about this, it's because I don't really know if this is going to work or not. And um, we're kind of past the point of no return, so it kind of has to work. Otherwise, we just throw the whole car in the dump. So, pressure's on, I guess.
And this is where we're at now. On the left hand side here, we have the Toyota steering column. And on the right, what was left of the Commodore steering column. So the idea is that this pipe here is actually hollow. So I was going to cut this off at the appropriate length and then try sleeve it over top of this one so that we can then use this fitting and just use all the Holden knuckles and U-joints, uh, uni-joints from here down and it'll all work out fine. Uh, that one is 25 millimeters uh, external diameter and this one is 25 millimeters external diameter. So that can work. That means I need to find, uh, chop this off, find 25 millimeter internal diameter pipe, sleeve over top, weld it on, and then sleeve that inside as well, uh, on this side. And so, well, <laughs> well if, you, if you follow what I'm saying here, we're gonna have the top Toyota steering column, we're gonna weld on the bottom of the Holden steering column, and then it's gonna be Holden from here, all the way down to the manual steering rack. That's the plan. I need to pull both the columns out of their columns. I need to pull the shafts out of the columns, I guess. Um, so then I can then start working on that. Well, we have officially passed the point of no return, or we've passed that a couple of times already actually. But anyway, this is our Toyota steering column shaft and we've chopped the end of that off. Uh, our holder one, again, we've chopped that off. So we've cut that as long as possible and we've cut that, uh, this bit here, as long as possible. And that is now sitting up in there. It's a bit of a tight fit, but as we come down here, the more we level out the mounting points, the more it pushes that into the cab. So we might have to do some trimming around here to fit this uni join further into the cab. Um, it's going to need to do some more cutting, but we'll make it work. Um, here it's got these little tab things. When they rotate, they hit on the chassis rail. So we have to either notch the chassis rail or cut those off. That's going to be the easy option, so they're coming off. Moving down here, as I said, we still have to mount them up. But now we know where to mount them because we have a sense line for the car and the sense line for our steering rack. They're lined up, expertly cable tied in. We've got a bit of timber spacing that way and this way. So this is roughly where it's going to end up. So I wanted to get to this point so now we can slide the engine in and see if it fails on anything. And to see, mainly, if all this has been in vain or not, to see if we can fit our header down through this hole that we've created. So, let's put an engine in and then have a look, see what it looks like. There we go, engine is in nice and snug and look at all the room we have for activities down in here. Before, the head was this stud here was fouling on our steering box, which sat in here where my fist is. But now we have no problems. We've got heaps of room there to make some headers. Got a bit of room to squeeze out on top of the drive, drive shaft. I keep going drive shaft. The steering rod arm, or whatever you want to call it anyway. But there's room in there to get through. Um, coming underneath the vehicle. And you can see there, there's plenty of room between the bell housing and the steering rack. And if we get even further under, can you see up in there, between the sump and the steering rack, there's plenty as well. And we should be able to make some mounts to uh, get that to our subframe. Um, as for the steering column, that, can you see that? That fits in there all right. Um, although I've just remembered that we have to make room for this to, um, hold it all together in there and uh, be able to rotate within the Toyota steering column. So that could be a bit of a mission, but I think now we'll pull the engine out. We know we've got plenty of room for activities in there and then we'll start fabbing up some mounts for the rack itself. Well, I got a bit carried away after fabricating and um, kind of forgot to turn the camera on. But anyway, this is where we're at. The steering rack is now mounted on its own mounts. No more blocks of timber under here. It is completely freestanding. It's fantastic. I'm really excited about this. So over this side, you can see the bottom brackets were designed first. I made a little L bracket, bent it to the right angle, and then I was able to draw holes and bolt that in. Then, if we come over this side, this one's just about complete. Um, I've then, <coughs> excuse me, 
and closed it in. So I've got a bit of metal going up here, which is then bent and going down the side. So we have um, three faces effectively holding it in. And uh, it should be more than strong enough for what we need. Um, here's hoping. So I'll just chuck a couple more welds in there, weld up on the inside a little bit, and then that's good to go. Uh, I'm currently designing the same piece. I'll come up here and across here, um, but I've run out of metal. So I'll have to go get some more steel so I can finish that off. Um, I've got a new plan of attack for in here. We're not going to put the union joint inside the cabin. Um, talking to the blind man, Jason, and he's designed quite a few hot rods and different vehicles over the years. And he's recommending to keep the union joint out of the cabin as it becomes a potential risk when it, if it ever breaks free and causes things to go flying about. So we're going to shorten this rod, which will then bring our U joint from up here or in there and bring it down to here where it needs to be. But that means that we're going to have to notch the chassis rail so that this joint here is able to spin freely. Um, not too hard, we'll cut a little section out here so that we can get the correct angles and everything. And then we'll just plate it in, uh, put some metal plates in there to give it strength back. Um, and then it's all going really well. Okay, so once those two jobs are done, then we just need to cut our inner tie rods and shorten them up so that we can bring our toe adjustment back to the way it should be. All right, so here's where we're at. Um, I've got to film well fabricating again, pretty much. Sorry about that. Um, but I get so caught up in getting it done that I forget to turn the camera on. And, and also, it's a lot of back and forth. So, you know, I'll cut something, put it in place, doesn't fit. So go back, cut it again, measure, cut, measure. And that goes on for a while and you're unbolting stuff and bolting it back up and it goes back and forth for ages. So not all that much interesting to watch. So I thought I'd just show you the fruits of my two days worth of labor now. And um, we now have rack and pinion steering in our Crescita. Check us out. So there we are. It is all mounted up nice and secure. We have our brackets on either end there. They're all bolted up and they are strong as anything. So that's really good for our purpose. Um, going up here, I still have to actually bolt it all in, uh, got to weld my shaft together there and weld that shaft together, but I'm going to do it later today. Now, if you can see that, that chassis rail has been notched, so just to create a little bit of clearance in there so that um, we can actually spin the steering wheel. Now, speaking of spinning the steering wheel, if I come down here, you get those wheels in shot, alright, turn it. Look at that, both wheels turn in both directions. We have also adjusted our toe. So to adjust the toe, where is it? Here we go. Had to cut that much off the inner tie rods. So that's what our tie rod looks like now. It's um, maxed out on the thread and I think we might actually be a little bit too much toe in the other direction now, which is easy to fix because we can just wind the tie rod out. Um, now, as you can see, it doesn't actually fit properly, so I'm in, I'm not sure yet where I want to find a tie rod end that actually fits properly and will go into the smaller hole here, or if I just drill the hole out in the knuckle and make that fit, because we've already got one. But that's it, it's all in, it works, only took two days, and um, I'm really proud of it actually, I've never done this kind of stuff before, so... Huge, huge learning curve. And there we have it. We have managed to finish one of the major projects of this vehicle, all in one video, which I'm really proud about as well. So next time we work on a Crescita, um, I'll finish up that bit of welding I gotta do, so that's all fully done. And then we'll probably look at plumbing and wiring the engine up. So we're gonna have to convert the fuel tank so that it can hold the Ford Fairmont fuel pump, uh, now that it's gonna be running an EFI engine. The setup that's in there now isn't going to cope. Um, we've got to get the PCM reprogrammed so I can start off out the key um, and a few other bits and pieces like that. But anyway, we'll talk about that in the next video. Until then, we'll catch you later.